Hi, I'm Travis Elliott with National Control Devices and today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, customize the settings of your Bluetooth module in your Bluetooth relay controller. The Bluetooth module was probably shipped to you installed on the relay board. It's a small black module um, and you can pull this module out of the board and then you can plug it into your Zigmo modem if you selected the Bluetooth configuration kit as an option. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to actually uh, plug that module into that black modem and then plug the USB uh, cable into the modem and then the other end of it into your computer. Now once you uh, plug this, this USB cord in um, the, the USB light on the bottom of the modem should turn on and be solid. Um, that basically means that the, uh, the USB device was connected and configured correctly for your computer. And you can tell that by going to uh, Start Menu and then go to Control Panel. And on Windows 7, I would click System and Security. On XP, you would just click the System icon. And then under here, we'll go to Device Manager right here. And under your device manager, if you expand COM and LPT ports, you should see a USB serial port. Mine happens to be COM12. If you don't see a USB serial port here and the USB light on the bottom of your Zigmo configuration board is not on solid, then you need to install the FTDI virtual COM port driver. And you can install that. The best way is to go to our website, controlanything.com, and then go to the resources button here. And then the bottom right hand corner you're going to see drivers and you'll see USB driver. And this will forward you to FTDI's website. And here you'll see uh, virtual COM port drivers and you're going to see uh, if you're running Windows you would just uh, over here to the right of Windows. I recommend clicking on the setup executable link. It is the easiest way to install the driver. If you're running Linux, Mac or, or another version um, you'll need to download the appropriate drivers for that. But I recommend clicking on the setup executable link and then you'll just run through the installation steps and it's pretty easy to do. Once that's done, um, unplug your modem, plug it back in and you should see the LED on the bottom come on solid and if you go under COM and LPT ports you should see a USB serial device appear. So now that we have our modem connected uh, correctly and uh, we have our module plugged into the board, we actually need to download the configuration software so that you can change the settings of your Bluetooth module. Um, to do that, we're going to go to Senna.com. Uh, That's S-E-N-A.com. This is actually the manufacturer of the Bluetooth module we use in our products. Now on Senna.com, up here at the top, you're going to see support, and under support you'll see downloads. We'll click there. And then this is basically all the drivers and uh, software for their products. And we're going to scroll down and see we, until we see the Pirani ESD devices. And here you're going to see uh, Pirani Win, Wizard, and Updater. And if we just click on this, it'll actually scroll down the page for us. And we will see... Let's see here, the Pirani e SD ESD series. We'll see Pirani Win to configure and connect Pirani SD and ESD series devices. So over here to the right, we would just run the setup Pirani Win 1.0.4.exe, which of course may be updated by the time you watch this. So we'll click and download that, and once it's downloaded, we're just going to open it up, and we're going to proceed through the installation. It says it's going to put it in my program files under Cinna, which is fine. So I'll click install. And here there's a checkbox to go ahead and run Pirani Win 1.0.4. If you have your modem connected, the USB light is on solid, you know the COM port number, and uh, you have your module, of course, plugged into the modem, uh, we can go ahead and leave that check and just click finish. And you'll see this uh, UART settings box come up. And we need to select the serial port that's created when we plugged in the modem. Mine happened to create COM12, so we'll select that. And then the baud rate is the baud rate of the Bluetooth module. Um, by default, we program these before we ship them to you. 
So your module should already be set to 115200. So we'll select that and then leave the rest alone and click OK. And we'll see it came up with all these settings and I actually already had mine named here. I'm going to show you how to do that. This is the device's Bluetooth address. It's kind of like a MAC address. Um, where you scan the network and if you try and make a a connection call from custom software you're going to need to know that MAC address. Um, the current mode which is mode 3 which is basically how the Bluetooth module allows connections and then its current uh, status which is sit standby. Uh, the UART settings are basically the settings that we've already programmed into the module for communicating with our PIC chips so I do not re recommend changing any of these. Now to change these settings we're just going to click over here double click on device settings. Um, this is pretty much all that you're going to need to do. You really shouldn't need to mess with any of these other uh, connection wizards or anything like that. Just run device settings and here you can change the mode um, for how it allows connections. Um, I like to set mine to allow any Bluetooth device to discover and connect to this device. You can restrict it so only the last device uh, can discover it. We usually ship these in mode 3 so that's what you should see is selected here. Uh, feel free to change it if you wish. Um, the UART baud rate settings, um, I would ask that you don't change anything here because these are all configured for communicating to our PIC chip so I don't recommend changing any of those settings. Uh, device name, you can put up whatever you want here. If you have several of these, um, it's a lot easier whenever you're pairing to the device and trying to figure out which one to connect to if it has a unique name. Um, and by default, it's ESD 200 V1.127, something like that. It's a big, crazy long name. So I do recommend uh, putting in a device name here. And under security, by default, we have this set to authentication, and we have the pin code set to 1234. Um, you will need to type something in here now that you open this page. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just put in 1234. I'm going to leave command response on, which I recommend doing. Uh, and then you can go ahead and click apply here. And this will apply, and it should say completed configuration, which is exactly what we were looking for. So we can click OK there. And we can, we're all done here, so we'll go ahead and close this software. And I'm going to minimize my browser. Now, on most computers, uh, at this point, we're ready to try and pair and communicate with the device. Now, with most computers, uh, Windows 7, Windows XP, you have a little toolbar down here. And if you expand, you'll see Bluetooth if the computer has Bluetooth built in. Um, I'm going to show you the steps for connecting the device with my built-in Bluetooth driver. Yours may be completely different, um, but it should be similar. So I'm going to click on my Bluetooth driver, and I'm going to click on Add a Device, which means it's going to scan for devices and show me what's available. So I'll click on that, and right now it is scanning, and I'll see my device actually showed up right here, Bluetooth Travis Relay Bluetooth. Uh, so we'll select that and then we'll click next and it's asking for the pin code which we entered as one two three four and then we'll click next and it says it's installing device driver software and we can actually open that up and uh, watch it go through this and go ahead and close this window and it created a standard serial over Bluetooth link COM19. It created a virtual COM port just like the USB modem did whenever we connected it. It also created a second one called COM20. Now the difference between these two is if your computer connects to the Bluetooth board, meaning it initialized the connection, then you would use COM19. If the board somehow connected to your computer, it would use COM20. So basically, you're never going to use COM20 because the relay board itself doesn't really have any good way of doing that. So we're going to use COM19. So we can go ahead and close this. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect my modem from the USB connection. So I'll just unplug the USB cable. I'm going to pull the module out of the modem. I'm going to take my relay board and I'm going to install the Bluetooth module back into it carefully. 
and then I am going to plug power into my relay board at this point. And I like to wait, wait a second or two for that to uh, come up and connect. And then we can go in here, and if you want to, you can go under Bluetooth, and you can go to Show Bluetooth Devices. Um, I apologize, my driver's acting funny, um, but normally you just double-click on this, and it would search for services, and it would come up and show you the virtual COM port number here. Like I said, my driver's acting a little funny today, um, so it's not showing up on mine, but it still works. So we'll go ahead and close that and close that, and at this point, we're actually ready to test the relay board. Um, I recommend going to our resources page once again and downloading the ProXR software here. You just click that, download, and install that software. I already have it installed, so I'm going to minimize my browser. And I'm going to go to Program Files, and it should show up under NCD ProXR. And then we'll click on ProXR. And uh, we have COM19 is the COM port of the Bluetooth device that was created. And we want to make sure uh, ProXR is selected here. And then we're going to click OK. And now your computer will connect and communicate to the board. And if you see this receive 85 come back, then you know it's connected. And we can click the relays on and off. And that's pretty much it for configuring your new Bluetooth device as far as drivers and uh, configuration setup go. Um, you can, of course, take a look at the uh, ProXR manual for more on actually configuring your relay board itself. But that's all there is to the customization and setup of the Bluetooth module. So I hope that this video was useful for you. And if you have any questions, please let us know. And we'll be happy to help. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.